What's up guys, it's All Day Anthony, and in today's exciting video, we are building the perfect racing sim setup for car enthusiasts. Let's go. So in today's video, we are teaming up with Moser Racing and GT Omega to build what could be, in my opinion, the perfect racing sim setup for car enthusiasts. Now I realize that compared to my usual car content here on the channel, that this video may seem a little bit out of left field, so let me give you some context. Now, I've been in racing sim games ever since I was a teenager with games like Gran Turismo, Project Cars, Dirt Rally, Forza Motorsport, and all of the above. But it wasn't until about three years ago that I built my very first racing sim cockpit, and needless to say, I've been addicted ever since. Now, as a car enthusiast, racing sims are one of the funnest ways to hone driving skills, learn new track layouts, and drive cars that you may never get to experience in real life. Plus, when you crash, you don't have to suffer the intolerable pain or financial burden that comes with it. It's truly amazing. Now, as far as my current racing sim setup goes, I've been running some mid-tier Thrustmaster gear that I've upgraded over the years. I actually started racing on consoles first with PlayStation 4 and Xbox Series X, but about two months ago, my friend Jimmy helped me build my very first racing sim PC, which opened up new doors for iRacing and of course modified Assetto Corsa, which now allowed me to drive boosted Honda Civics, high horsepower Evos, and all of the tuner cars that my heart desires. Now, since switching to PC, that also opened up a ton of other options for me for significantly better racing sim gear that will give me a better feel and overall experience when I'm turning laps in the sim. Hence why I have this giant mountain of boxes in front of me. So today, we're gonna be building the GT Omega Prime Light cockpit and pairing it with the full line of Moser racing gear, including the R12 direct drive wheelbase. After that, we're gonna take this setup for a rip and I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts on how it feels in the hands of a car enthusiast. So with that said, we have a cockpit to build, so let's get to the unboxing. So the GT Omega cockpit has been unboxed and honestly, I don't even know where to start. I mean, literally, I don't know where to start, so I'll probably have to look at the instructions, but I don't even know where to start in terms of the quality. This seat feels incredible. This fabric here with the Alcantara here on the side just feels amazing. It feels just as good as a real racing seat. And the quality of it, yeah, again, full on lever here like you would have in a real car. All of this right here, all the anodized aluminum, it's insane. I still have to unpackage those right there. The floor plate is back there, and then the mounting system for the wheelbase is over there as well. But I am just blown away. I cannot wait to put this together. So my friend Jimmy is on the way to help me kind of film and help me assemble this because this might take me a minute. All right, so Jimmy has arrived at the party. Jimmy, where do we begin? I, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Me, me either. We're going to look at the instructions. We're going to figure out where to start and begin the build. And I'll chime in as needed uh, for anything that's interesting or any type of hiccups. But we're going to try to make this thing work.
All right, guys, so this is finally starting to look like something. We have the seat mounted onto the base here. Everything went smoothly down there. It took roughly 30 minutes or so to build the base. And then the seat was actually pretty easy to install, uh, minus the front bolts. So we had to use this very low profile ratcheting tool here to be able to get into those front bolts. But once we got that on, this has been so sick to look at. It feels amazing, it's very comfortable. It's got the reclining here on the side as well. And yeah, so far so good. So let's get back to it. Alright guys, so we just finished up with the last few bits on the GT Omega Prime Light, and good god, is this thing rock solid. Jimmy, yeah. it, it's, it's, in, it's insane, man. I know it doesn't look probably that crazy in terms of like the construction of everything, but trust me when I say that this thing isn't going anywhere, as any good dad would say. <laughs> Strap her down. Strap her down. I mean, Everything on here is just rock solid and all the hardware all the fittings everything was just super high quality We didn't have an issue with one thing and so I am just pumped on it This seat with the lumbar support is amazing all the cloth feels great this micro suede here on the outer feels so good I mean, I don't really know what else to say other than I am like beyond impressed and I love the plate down there here uh, Just to kind of add that extra finishing touch to it So at this point all we have left to do is unbox and install all of the Moza racing goodies that I am Pumped to do now that we have a proper cockpit again. This thing feels so awesome I mean in comparison to the Corvo seats that I have in the Honda Civic this feels literally just as good So it's gonna feel right at home being a car enthusiast sitting in this and turning laps in the sim All right, Jimmy you ready to get fancy with it? guys so we have all of the Moza gear in box and this is absolutely wild Jimmy you agree this is crazy this, this is pretty nuts so we have the CRP pedals here we have the base for the CRP pedals we have the R12 direct drive wheelbase which I am so excited to try out we have the ES wheel with the ES 12 inch mod here we have the KS wheel that I am beyond pump for and of course we have the notchiest shifter I have ever felt on a simulator ever Agreed? Yeah, it's, it's compared to the Thrustmaster one that me and you both have, it's, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. So first on our list is we are going to get the CRP pedals mounted to the base and we're going to get it over here onto the cockpit. Then we're going to mount the direct drive, get the shifter mounted and all of that and get this thing looking cooler than it already looks.
All right, Jimmy, you want to give the shifter its first whirl? Yeah. You, you deserve it, man. You've been helping me out a ton on this. Yeah, I need one. <laughs> I need one bad. All right guys, so it's getting pretty late and Jimmy had to take off, but I do wanna say that he was a massive help with the assembly of everything. So shout out to Jimmy for helping me out. You can check out his own YouTube channel at Jimmy Riggs on YouTube. But other than that, this thing is pretty much done and it feels absolutely incredible. I actually, I can't even believe how good this setup feels. I'm gonna have to make some fine tune adjustments, drop the steering wheel down just a little bit, play with the shifter a little bit more, obviously play with the pedals, but I think that we're at a solid starting point and this thing is just insane, man. Again, as like a car enthusiast and somebody who's picky about all the mods that I put on my own cars, like this right here, is like a godsend because that's what makes this kind of setup so awesome because as GT Omega adds more accessories to their cockpits, I can add those onto this thing. If Moza comes out with new racing gear, I can simply swap that out for different wheels or different wheel bases, things like that. So I can definitely build on this rig as time goes on. So with that said, tomorrow night, I believe the prime monitor stand shows up. So we're gonna be able to mount the 55 inch TV in here and finally give this thing a rip. So I'll see you then. A few moments later. All right guys, so the GT Omega Prime Monitor stand showed up tonight, which means that this will be the cherry on top of the cake that's already full of cherries. But this is going to allow me to mount my 55 inch TV and I'm gonna be able to place this really wherever I want to, kind of within this vicinity here. And I really think that's going to improve the racing experience substantially. So with that said, I have some instructions over here and we are back to more building. All right, so we got the prime monitor mount assembled and the 55 inch TV installed and this thing looks legit. I am so pumped on this. Now, as far as the assembly of the monitor mount goes, I did my best to get some shots, but when it came to mounting the TV, I was really struggling by myself and trying to film. So I grabbed my neighbors, they helped me out, and that portion was just kind of three dudes struggling. So you can kind of see the main gist of it though. A universal backing here that will pretty much mount virtually any size TV or monitor. And this thing is so freaking sturdy, you could hang off of it. So it, it's a very, very, very nice monitor mount. So at this point, all we have left to do is bring out the PC, wire this thing up and start it up for the first time. Oh my God.
so I don't really know what happened there, but I turned everything on, then I blacked out and woke up six hours and 500 laps later. The whole ordeal was just really crazy. But on a serious note, I've had the setup here in the garage for the past couple days, and I put quite a bit of lap time in it, and I gotta say, this whole setup feels absolutely incredible. Technically, it feels more race car than my actual cars do, G-Force and vibration aside. So what I wanna do to round out this video is go over things one last time and give you guys my final first impression review on all of the individual bits. So starting with the GT Omega RS12 seat, this thing is on par with what I think is a good aftermarket seat. It feels extremely comfortable. I really do like the bolstering. Down here on the bottom, it's actually pretty wide, so it's not gonna hug you as much as you would probably want, uh, but I actually kind of enjoy it because it's easier to get in and out of it. This lumbar support thing here, not really for me. I mean, it is comfortable, but I kind of feel like it's pushing me too forward, so I'll probably remove that. But outside of that, the build quality, the micro suede here, all of the stitching looks extremely good. And then of course, I love the adjustability of the slider and of the recliner here to be able to really get it to the position that I like for racing. Now, for the GT Omega Prime Light cockpit, I have no idea why they call this the light version. I know they make technically a thicker version just called their Prime version, but I can't imagine something feeling more rigid than this does. I mean, how modular it is, how much you can customize on it is incredible, but this thing is rock freaking solid, man. It's insane. All of the hardware used, all of the fittings, everything went in perfectly, and the quality of everything, like the hardware. I mean, again, it was nice hardware. I was expecting some cheap stuff to be stripped out. That wasn't the case. Everything felt so good with the build quality, but I do wish that I would have started here from the beginning when I kind of got into my sim venture because this is something that I could have built on for years to get it to perfection, but now I'm just kind of starting out with a bunch of ideas thinking, what can I do next? Now, speaking of add-ons, this plate right here is actually an add-on to the Prime Light, and I'm really glad I did it. It kind of just adds that nice final finishing touch, and it also makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of. Uh, plus, without it, all I would see is just bare carpet there, so it's a nice finishing touch, and it's strong as hell. I mean, I could literally jump on top of the damn thing, and it's not gonna move at all, so, Again, it kind of just adds to that extra effect of the cockpit. And then over here on the shifter plate, this thing is needed. Especially if, I mean, if you're, you're you should be rocking a shifter with a setup like this, uh, but this thing is freaking solid. It feels amazing here. And again, I love the fact that this is modular so you could switch this from being uh, left-hand drive to right-hand drive or whatever you would prefer. So what caught me by surprise the most was actually the Prime monitor stand. This was an additional add-on here to the Prime light, but this thing right here, good God! I didn't know what to expect when I was looking at the website. I was kind of like, okay, is it this, you know, is it yay big, is it this big? Uh, this is a 55-inch TV here. I could go significantly bigger with this monitor stand with no issues at all whatsoever. I mean, this is the starting point here in which if you wanted to build a three screen stand or a four screen stand, you would do it all here off of this base starting point and just build off of that. But this thing, you could swing off this, you could hang off of it. I mean, you know what they say, if you can hang from it, you can, you know. I am extremely impressed with the quality of this. I love that everything bolted up, and of course you have plenty of adjustment here if I wanted to drop the screen down to get it more eye level. All right, so moving to the Mosey gear, this was a massive step up for me from going from a belt-driven wheelbase to a direct drive wheelbase, and good God, is there a difference. You have significantly more feedback and more detail in the road. All of the rumble, all of the road textures, and all of that really does translate significantly better to a direct drive unit. Now, Moza does make several different versions of this. They have like the R5, they have the R9, they have the R12, this one right here, and then they have, I believe, the R21. I mean, you can have it go to where it's pretty damn strong, but I feel like this R12 is the sweet spot for a car enthusiast. I mean, you shouldn't be fighting the dang car to be able to enjoy driving it on the sim. You should be able to have it feel somewhat realistic, and I feel like the R12 is something that kind of gives you that feel. So yeah, I'm in love with that, and I love how solid everything feels. The quick release here, I mean, this thing mounted to the GT Omega, oh my God, it is 
Dude, it's solid, it feels amazing. Now for the wheel, this is the ES wheel. This is their entry level wheel that has the 12 inch wheel mod on it. It was pretty easy to do, a couple screws here, pops right off and you're able to replace it with this larger rounder wheel. And I think that this was pretty good. It's pretty clicky. It leaves a little bit to be desired on like the clickiness and maybe some of the buttons. But for the most part, it's better than anything I was rocking previously. And I think it's something to kind of get my feet wet here within the direct drive. So I really dig it with the 12 inch mod. Now go Going to the KS wheel here, this is a completely different beast. This is literally one of the nicest wheels I've ever I've ever felt, uh, and technically at the price point for this, it's still really, really affordable. It has the same quick release here on the back. It's got this kind of carbon fiber finish, but every single button has this nice notchy clickiness to it that makes it feel extremely high quality. And in the few hours I was using it, I felt like right at home and it felt like the response of every single little movement I did was directly translated to the game. Now for the shifter, there's really not much to say here. This is the nicest shifter I've ever felt, uh, car included and sim included. This thing is so freaking notchy, it's amazing. Down to get into seventh, down to get into reverse here. It's, yeah, not much else to say. That's the best shifter I've ever felt. Now, as far as the CRP brake pedals go, I don't even really know where to begin with these. Uh, these are an absolute beast. They're more pedal than what I actually need, and there's so much adjustment on these that it's kind of overwhelming. Every single pedal can be adjusted to your liking, so uh, the grabbing point here on the clutch, uh, the tension here on the brake with the spring and the damper, and then over here on the gas pedal, I think actually this one doesn't have as much adjustment, but this thing feels insane as well. Everything is made out of metal. Everything is just finished so nicely that it's almost like you don't want to get them dirty, uh, but these things are in fact gonna get pretty dirty. And uh, I do love how everything kind of daisy chains together here and makes connectivity really easy. But yeah, it's these are these are wild. So the setup for the Moza stuff went extremely smoothly. All I did was plug them into the PC, it automatically downloaded the drivers, I loaded up Assetto Corsa and everything was recognized and I was able to jump right into it. But if I wanna make more adjustments and more changes, especially with all of the LEDs here on the KS wheel, then I would download the Moza software and I can change quite literally everything, even including uh, the pedals as well, the steering wheel. You can really fine tune the setup with their software, which is also really, really cool. So really, I wanted to go into this video as a car enthusiast, as somebody who modifies cars and loves cars, and I wanted to see how good that this kind of setup could feel in comparison to a lot of entry setups out there, and see if I can kind of direct people to jumping into the right thing the first time around, because I genuinely think that starting out, or at least trying something like this, will completely change your perspective on sim racing, and it may or may not get you hooked, or it may or may not cause a lot of financial problems problems in your life, but regardless, you're going to have an absolute blast. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am going to link both Moza and GT Omega down in the description below, and I want to thank both of the companies for helping me make this video and hopefully inspiring you to jump into sim racing or at least give it a shot. So as always, if you guys enjoy my content, you guys enjoy this video, maybe you love seeing the car content, or maybe you do enjoy seeing me build a racing simulator, please, please, please make sure to give me a a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and happy racing.